All right. Uh, today is March 6, 2023. It is now 6.05 p.m. Uh, I'm going to call this meeting to order of the uh, Atlanta City Council. If we could all stand, and if Pastor Witt is going to do the invocation for us today. So come on up to the mics. Heavenly Father, we come before you today thankful that you are a God who cares for those such as us in this community. We come to you today in thankfulness for the fruitfulness of this town and its community, Lord, and we come in thankfulness for the servants who serve this community in each of the various roles that keep this town functioning and keep its citizens safe. God, we pray that you would continue to prosper and bless this community, especially as this community continues to take care of the least of these and all who are in need. Lord, we pray that you would watch over this council, all in attendance at this meeting tonight, and help us to draw together those who may uh, disagree and not see eye to eye on the issues and challenges that will be brought up tonight. Lord, we pray that you would open our eyes and our ears to what you would have us do and be as a community. Remove from us our own selfish ambitions and wants, and let us look tonight to what is best and what is good for this community and its people. Jesus, help us to want what you want, to know you and lead out of that knowledge in relationship. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you. Absolutely. Great job. Uh, if you stay standing for our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This is Schofield. <clears throat> Ramirez? Present. Velasquez? Present. McIntyre? Present. Ayala? Present. Ochoa? Here. Vila? Here. Ventoya? Here. All right. Uh, minutes of previous meeting. Motion to accept. Have a motion by a second? I'll second that. Oh, I go ahead. Seconds. No, go ahead, Lisa. Lisa got it. <laughs> Got a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Not a last for your vote. And that passes unanimously. All right, now it is Renee time. Miss um, Renee Martinez from uh, Senator Michael Bennett's office. Um, and I actually talked to Councilman Velasquez, and then he made the introduction between uh, me and Renee, and we got her to our meeting. And uh, we're just interested to hear what's going on with the Senator's office and anything you need to know of us. Thank you, Renee, for doing this. Maybe. Sure, absolutely. Happy to be on the call. So I, I mostly reached out because I wanted to introduce myself. I have been engaged with different meetings in Otero County, but not with the city council director directly. And so I just wanted to take this opportunity to let you know I'm here. Um, if you ever have constituent needs such as VA, IRS, Social Security, I would be your point of contact for yourself or any of your constituents. I'm happy to assist with any of those needs. And just wanted to provide an update on what the Senator is focusing on this term. As many of you know, he began his third term on January 3rd, and he will serve a six-year term. So his major themes are fighting for kids and building an economy that works for all, serving as a fierce champion for Colorado and the American West, and defending democracy here and abroad. And his legislation will be based on those three themes. His committee assignments are agriculture, nutrition, and forestry. He is the chair of the subcommittee on taxation and IRS oversight under the finance committee. and. Um, Many of you may have received a press release where the senator rallied against taxing our taper checks, and as a result of that, we will not; those are not taxable. Um, he's also on the intelligence committee, and if you do follow his news as well, he is an advocate against the TikTok app, not only on government-issued devices, but generally. And finally, he is on the Rules and Administration Committee. Um, I also wanted to bring to your attention, and, and, it, and it sounds like you already knew this because of previous outreach, but 
We are right in the middle of receiving congressionally directed spending applications, and that closes on this Friday. Um, congressionally directed spending, or CDS, is what we formerly called earmarks, and this is where um, we accept applications and submit them to the various committees for um, for consideration and, and hopefully approval. Um, in the FY22 year, um, the Belly White House received $250,000 for renovation and expansion of the clinic in Rocky Ford. I know that Otero County, or city rather, of Atlanta has submitted um, some CDS applications. And um, should we have any additional questions, I will be your point of contact for that process as well. If we have additional questions or if there's something that's not clear in your application, then we will be reaching out. And again, um, most likely that, that outreach will come from me. Um, I am open to any questions you may have at this time. Well, Renee, uh, District Clemency Manager, and I uh, just uh, yeah, expressed to uh, Senator Bennett our appreciation of, uh, on uh, his uh, work on behalf of uh, the rural veterans and giving them uh, access. Absolutely. Rick, what was the gentleman's name from Bennett's office that we met? What was the gentleman at Action 22 we met? Wasn't he with Bennett as well, too? Uh, Oh yes, uh, the, the the guy from uh, Grenada. Uh, what what's uh, the the kid from Grenada, Renee? Oh, Antonio. Mark. Antonio. The yes. Yeah. yeah, that's Hickenlooper. Yeah. Oh, it's Hickenlooper. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Oh, nice guy. Nice guy. Yeah, yeah. But Terry Linker, um, as many yeah. of you probably know, is your is your point of contact for your county. Um, she 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 was with Senator Hickenlooper. So you probably received the information on CBS from mm -hmm. both of us. Right. Um, and if you attended our one of our webinars, you heard that you were able to apply to one or both senators for that, that funding. Um, and I do know that we that I did receive the letters of support for the projects in Atlanta. And, um, so we'll be looking through those once the deadline passes. Is she who we would reach out to for conduit <coughs> stuff? What's that? Is she who we would, who we would reach out to for conduit? Uh, for Dark Valley Conduit, would you be our contact for that yes, too? Uh, yes, yeah. absolutely. And the, the senator has, has advocated and secured millions of dollars for ABC. Uh, we're still waiting from the Bureau to hear from the Bureau of Reclamation as to the date for that groundbreaking, um, but we're anticipating that to happen this spring. And yes, definitely, I would be your point of contact for that. Right. Yeah. Is that the brown, ground baking for uh, Pueblo to Avondale? Well, the ground breaking for the project in, in general. Yeah, and then of course that'll all be in phases, but I don't think they're, gonna, they're planning to do individual ground breakings for, per phase. Any other questions for Renee? Well, thank you for your time, Renee. We appreciate you, and we'll probably be reaching out soon. That's great, and I hope to get there in person um, and in not uh, too distant future. All right. Looking forward to it. Great. Thank you for the time. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right. Next, we'll have citizens' participation. Julie, I think you have some guests. Well, after the heavy meeting that you guys had before, this is really going to be a light for you. Um, this week, the Lahana Chamber of Commerce is sponsoring Young Ameritown on the Road. The project is set up out at the armory. You all are welcome to come anytime between 10 and 2, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And what it is, is uh, Young Ameritown, I'm going to let Amanda tell you a little more about it, but it is a project that teaches kids finance. It's for 4th, 5th, and 6th graders. 
teaches them finance, philanthropy, entrepreneurship, free enterprise. It's just a great project. Uh, we had Manzanola fifth, sixth graders today. Tomorrow we have uh, Crowley County fifth graders. Wednesday we have uh, Honey, Pritchett, Vilas, and Kim fourth, fifth, and sixth graders. And Thursday we have Rocky Ford fifth graders. Now I talked to Lahana and they couldn't work it in their schedule because there is a curriculum that goes into the classroom prior to the kids coming to town, T-O-W-N-E. And when you guys get home, there will be a couple of videos, should be, right, Melanie? Yes, on your emails about uh, Young Ameritown, and you might want to watch them. But I'd like to introduce now um, Kelly Holland. She's been the go-to today. Mm -hmm. And Amanda Crochet, who, both from the Young America Center in Denver. And they'll tell you just briefly what the whole project is. And La Hunta Chamber of Commerce brought it to town. It is sponsored by Three Corners Connector this year because there was a student registration fee per student and Three Corners has helped us kind of alleviate that. It costs the school $5 a head to bring their students. Good job. So Amanda? Good job. Ah, well, thank you. Um, not as nervous of, uh, now as when I was with 25 fifth and sixth graders earlier today, um, but I was really excited to let them know this is the first time we have been in this area. So these were our first kiddos who got to experience Young Ameritown. Um, and I know there have been some people in the community that might have grown up in Denver and they were able to do it when they were in fifth grade. And so that's our goal. Um, we are a nonprofit in Denver. Um, Young American Center for Financial Education is the nonprofit. Um, we were introduced um, into Denver by Bill Daniels. Um, so Bill Daniels originated the bank it is a real for-profit bank. However, the bank makes no money, so Bill Daniels left in perpetuity to cover any losses of the bank. He wanted it more as an education-based bank rather than a money-making bank. So we have everything for young people um, as an adult bank has, just in a kid-like way. Checking accounts, savings accounts, certificates of deposits, bank loans, all of the things. Um, the community in Denver wanted more than just the bank. That's how the nonprofit was originated, and that's where Young Ameritown came into play. Um, so in Denver, we can see about 30,000 kids a year. Our board of directors, about um, eight years ago, they really um, challenged us to expand the program, and so that's what we are continuing to do. So we're really excited to be here. There is about 18 hours worth of curriculum that the teachers are doing in the classroom before they even get to us. So they are learning um, all about banking, about budgeting, about government. You might all have some uh, future um, leaders on your hands. We had a mayor actually today was elected from their peers um, that led our day. Uh, they also learn about philanthropy. Um, and so in the town, uh, they use their debit cards, they write checks, they have cash, and their goal is to try and make a profit for their business after their business had paid back the bank loan. Um, the bank loan is 10%, seems like a lot, but 10% is really easy math for our fifth graders, that's why we do it. Um, and then their other goal is to not overdraw their personal checking account. So we had some really great conversation with some kids today about them not using their checkbook register, making some poor choices maybe in their day, but as adults, hopefully they're not gonna do that. Um, so I, I guess if you have any questions, I would love to answer them. Um, we're just really excited to be here. We're really excited to expand. And we really hope now that um, we can continue to come back year after year and see more students. And that's truly our goal um, to, to do this. What Joe, I just want to tell you, you might be careful because the mayor elected today, although he was from Manzanola, he was very good. <laughs> he was very good. <laughs> <laughs> and we had a police chief, we had a... There was a judge. There was a judge, and it was a woman judge. Mm -hmm. And then we had the auditor. Uh, we had bankers. We oh, had yeah, bankers. We do have a snack shop. We have to have some sugar in town. <laughs> um, we have a newspaper, so they actually made a real newspaper where they were finding the stories, writing those down, selling the paper. Um, radio station. Radio station. We were hearing lots of fun music today. Um, we might have had to change the music a couple times when we wanted it to be more um, songs that we liked. But um, there are nine shops um, in our in our town. So, so I really yes. encourage any of you, if you can just take an hour off work, to come out and see it because you will be amazed at what happens. So did the kids pick up their uh, uh, businesses uh, beforehand? So that's a great question. So they actually are going to, um, in they have workbooks and it has all of the um, 
the worksheets the kids are going to need for the program. That's a big thing for teachers, right, about having to print worksheets. And so everything comes within that $15 of their workbooks. In there, there's a help wanted page. So it tells them all the jobs that are available. They go in and they circle what they want. They do some skill assessments and then they actually interview for the positions. And so they have done all of that work prior to, and then they actually will get some training before they come to us where they're gonna meet in their business group. So our town hall will meet together and our snack shop will meet together. And they're gonna come up with a business name, some business goals, a slogan, a logo, all that sort of stuff before they even get to us during that day of town. What age group is it? Great question. So we um, actually align the lessons to fifth and sixth grade common core and state standards. So not only are these kids getting this really great hands-on experience, they're also fulfilling a lot of the standards they already have to meet during that age range. So is this an every year thing or is this? We hope so. So we can get Lana involved next time? Exactly. And <laughs> we, the Chamber of Commerce just wants to thank the city because Rick allowed us to use the armory at no charge. The council allowed us, and that's we thank you for that, because that was a big a big cost, and um, so the and the registration for the kids, and we got sponsorship for ten dollars of the fifteen dollar registration fee. So the schools just paid five dollars a head to bring their students to town. So if you come back next year, will it be a continuing curriculum, so these follow the kids through a certain age, or does it just stay with the kids? So great question. So actually, we'll have um, some of the schools, I think, want to come back and do it again. Um, and we actually have in our curriculum where um, we have some challenge lessons a little bit. So if it is their second time through, or they're part of like a GT program or anything like that, it's going to be at kind of that next level. Um, but typically, we see fifth and sixth graders. The little schools are bringing fourth, fifth, and sixth. Yes. Yeah. yeah, we need about 25 kids to run the program, and it can go up to about 60. So that's a big difference of 25. It's a lot quieter with 25, and then we get to 60, and it's, it's pretty loud, depending on the group. Sometimes the 25s are pretty, pretty loud also. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much. One more question. Yes. Uh, what was your rate on your certificate of deposits? <laughs> I work for the nonprofit side, so I don't know. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you Julie. Thank you guys. And Julie, thank team. you. Anyone else for citizen participation? Oh. No? Actually, I guess I could bring this up in citizen participation. I had a constituent who had come to me and they were concerned with some asphalt area where um, people, um, it's kind of a busy area by Bus Hog and where the asphalt uh, going to the parking area uh, of the entrance of Bus Hog was deteriorating and On third I don't know, street or, uh, it'd be third, third, third Street, I believe it's Third Street, so I don't know if that's just something that um, you know, once the weather gets warmer and we get asphalt, maybe And uh, we'll get asphalt uh, starting the uh, first part of uh, April. I called on them uh, Friday. Mm -hmm. That's what they said. April? Good. Yeah. Good? Okay. Because yeah. uh, uh, they got the nursing home. Great. Yeah. Okay. So. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Anything else? No? New business committee and board reports. Any committee and board reports? I attended the Senior Center Advisory Board uh, and be brief. Uh, after discussion about the, the dues increase, uh, decided that they will put that out on the senior newsletter. So instead of having the news break tonight, it'll go out on, on the newsletter so they can get their entire membership with that. So I guess and it's a cliffhanger. And it Dylan. went from 6 to 10, is that what it went to? They haven't really decided. Oh, well, it's, it's going to get. Yeah, it's going to be good. You have to read that. Read Time to do ten percent. That's a flat rate. I think. No, no. <laughs> so that was the the wishes of the board. So I respect. Okay. Um, I put in front of you um, for the Art Valley Regional Medical Center. Um, this was actually the volume one. Uh, it was January's newsletter. Um, there's a group that's working on putting out a newsletter. It hadn't been done for a while, and um, our CEO, Andy Flemmer, had presented this to um, the board, 
back in January, and I had copies made and brought it so you guys could see um, that you know something new that they're doing. And so um, he's looking forward to that for for their staff and just kind of an informative type of a newsletter that that they're just started working on. So that come out quarterly. I think they're going to try and do it um, monthly, but uh, I don't have a February one, so. Huh. Oh, actually, it is January through March, so it would probably be a quarterly. Mm -hmm. so that's something new that they're doing, and there's a couple of people who are working on it, so just like to thank them. And is that gift shop still open, Elaine? Yes, it is. It is. Maybe they can put some specials in there, huh? Oh, possibly. That's a good idea. It's a cute little shop. It's a nice gift shop. It's good yeah. for uh, people to get um, little trinkets and things. Any other committee and board reports? City manager comments. Uh, this, this is pretty good. Man. I like that. And uh, boy, I really like uh, working with Andy. Uh, first of all, uh, let me. Uh, the, uh, a great pleasure, you know, uh, State of Colorado, Department of Local Affairs, uh, inform you that Lahana Rise, uh, and this went to uh, Joe A. Allen, Lahana Rise has been accepted to advance in tiers of, to designated status in the Colorado Main Street program. You have demonstrated a strong commitment to downtown revitalization, developed a strong strategic uh, vision, mission, and work plan, and created a long-term financial program's sustainability and have a dedicated professional manager who has successfully employed uh, the Main Street four-point approach. So uh, the Main Street program is designed to advocate and support the rebuilding of historic downtowns based on traditional assets of each community's unique character, architect, and local ownership. This letter is to acknowledge that an additional $7,500 will be added to your uh, Main Street mini grant as a result to, uh, in your moving up to the tiers. We are excited to advance you in the tiers and look forward to working with you as you achieve your goals. Uh, sincerely, Rick Garcia, Executive Director of DOA. Nice. Yes, so uh, we're uh, one tier away from uh, being a graduate. Next time we graduate. How about that? Now, I remember when we uh, first started this years ago, we were wondering whether we could make it through the first one. And here we are, in the third one. Yeah, and that opens up doors for grants. It sure does yeah. open up a lot of doors for grants. And uh, so uh, we got this for uh, the mayor to sign, and uh, we'll get it back to him. Congratulations. Yes, congratulations to us. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of work by on a rise, Cynthia, Greg, yeah. all of them. That, that's a lot of work. So yeah, thank yeah, you. That's right. Involved. That's a lot of work. Um, as far as my comments, you know, uh, working with the uh, utility board on uh, rate study, they had a presentation after the last meeting. Uh, we will have to start addressing some of that. Uh, we did apply, uh, apply for direct funding for uh, the runways and the backup generation. So we can have a liability out there in case we uh, the grid goes down. Hey, the brick and tile playground <laughs> is being uh, done. You know, I put down they should be done within two weeks, and I'm still going to hold two to two weeks. Uh, but I went out there uh, this afternoon, and uh, they started pouring down a pouring place. They weren't supposed to show up until next week. So may get done a little bit faster than what we're anticipating. Just keep the two weeks. But <laughs> let's keep the two weeks because there'll be there'll be something else. And then we got to yeah. put up uh, two uh, shade shelters, you know, before we start getting people out there and stuff. But folks, keep away from the playground. You know, uh, I know it looks entertaining right now, but we got concrete setting up. You don't want those foundations to break or anything. We got to let them cure out and let's do this upright. So we have a park that lasts us for decades and I can't wait to see the youth on that uh, playground play and uh, just means I have to join you on some of them okay <laughs> but I never did grow up I never will okay we poured the floor for the bathroom for brick and tile now uh, we'll start building the walls uh, in about four weeks you know we gotta let that concrete uh, cure because we're putting block building up and uh, that's uh, going to be pretty good 
uh, today, uh, you know, we, we've turned in all the stuff for uh, to the Army Corps of Engineers, and uh, CDOT actually came to our t uh, uh, aid and uh, helped us get all the information. Uh, you know, there was a uh, one item uh, called an uh, ordinary high water mark. Now, you know, you think about that on our Arroyo. And uh, so they send us this 85-page uh, document that uh, just confuses the heck out of most people and stuff like that. But I actually enjoy it. <laughs> but you know, but you got you got rivers that flow, you got mm -hmm. ones that are intermediate, then you got ones like us that just flood every now and then. Well, they have a whole bunch of data you got to get before you can <laughs> figure out this high water mark. But we got that done, got it all turned in. I think it's going to turn out to be okay. I was uh, kind of happy with. Uh, the results with that we got. I don't think they could come up with anything else. I'm just praying and hoping. Uh, we had another van break on 1400 block of uh, Bellevue. And actually, uh, that one, uh, it broke probably about seven, eight years ago, just uh, up the road from there. Uh, we have baseball, softball, tennis programs, starting at all of our facilities. Um, you know, uh, I don't know, uh, Brock's gone, I don't know where the, the but we did order that scoreboard, and uh, so I'm going to be checking to see when it comes in. And the Senior Center will be having an open house on uh, April 21st from uh, 1 to 3. Please uh, show up, let them showcase, uh, show them what our um, services are. The library's going to set up a little table there, and we're going to start showing uh, what you're getting your, your tax dollars go for and uh, why it's worth that 1%. Okay, we are crack filling on uh, 24th, the uh, 22nd and 24th on Bellevue. And uh, after that, they'll uh, go uh, back out on the east side of town, uh, uh, like 4th Street from Kenilworth over to Daniels, and uh, finish off like Daniels. But uh, some of these areas, these cracks are two, three inches wide. And uh, that, shit, that those roads shouldn't be doing that. I don't know what's up there. Uh, and uh, uh, if you've been looking around, we've been replacing uh, street line uh, signs, and boy, what a difference. I mean, size-wise, but when you go out at night, it's like night and day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> and uh, we will uh, be filling uh, potholes as much as we can. So, and with that, open to questions. Any questions for Mr. Klein? Rick, I have somebody that they've expressed interest in being on the committee for the next ballot issue. Yes, so give me their name. Well, when I can okay. they look forward to starting that? We were really waiting for this, this budget work yeah. session to get done and then okay. we're yeah. ramp up. Where, where we got to start uh, before the end of the month. On the committee? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, I'll let them know to get in touch with you. Please. Yeah, anybody Please. looking to, oh, to join that? Yeah. And uh, even if you don't live in the city of uh, La Honda, because I've had a few of the uh, people ask about that, sure, come on, man. Uh, you all show the support. It helps. <clears throat> Can we be the principals in organizing that, Mr. Counselor? No. Thank you. Any other questions for Rick? No. Yeah, I was just grunting. <laughs> <laughs> Governing body comments. I, I have a couple. If nobody else has one, go ahead. Me? Okay. Uh, next Sunday is daylight savings time. Don't forget to set your clocks forward, and we'll be meeting earlier, really five o'clock. So a word to the wise for everybody who's interested in city's business. Also the Knights of Columbus, a very philanthropic local organization. Uh, we have put in a new floor in the entire building. And uh, the new half wall that we had, it's also been taken down and new one will be put up. So those of you bingo players and other activities, bear with us. We will get there, and it shouldn't be too long. So that's all I had, man. Thank you. Any other governing body comments? I'm uh, 
having a past ask for information. Uh, this is library information that's that's out there. Uh, programs, the calendar, uh, the pamphlet. Keeps coming. Yeah, the pamphlet uh, has all the information pertaining to services uh, of the library, and all this is available down there also. But these are all the things, programs, amenities uh, that are available through our local library. Uh, these are programs and things that are available to the public. Uh, these are things that uh, any possible tax increase in the future would help to survive and continue to be there for our local citizens. So I want to get that information to us so we know it and uh, just let the public know there, there's a lot available to them through this library. So just wanted to let everybody have that information. Thank you, Tim. Yes, thank you. Did you do this, Tim? The adult reading program? No. You know, I, 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 re I read on my own. I, I utilize the library, but uh, my mother has been an avid uh, library person and done programs. Uh, actually pushed my kids into more programs. Probably pushed my kids into more programs than I have. Uh, pertaining to library, but uh, they utilize it, and, uh, and it's it's a good thing. I I had a conversation with Heather. I hadn't been here very long, a couple months, and uh, brought up the fact of the the gift that you gave us, Joe, for Christmas <laughs> that year was a book, and and it was a pretty good book. So, uh, the tipping points. Yeah. 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 I, I signed up on this. Uh, uh, WMLReadSquared.com. It was really quick, really simple. You have till the end of the month if you do want to do the adult reading program. Um, you know, maybe Damon will challenge me. I don't know. We'll see who wins. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Beeler has another comment. Yes. Uh, Kimberly, when's our next Friends of the Library meeting? Um, it's on your calendar. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> third, third. Anyway, when? Third Thursday. Third Thursday, okay. And they are still doing Those of you who would like to join Friends of the Library and help facilitate the uh, uh, exhaustive efforts they're going through to try to save money and so forth without taking away the quality of the service they give, show up or uh, send Kimberly an email and uh, she'll be happy to get you in as a member. And I think the annual dues are only, what, $15? Something like that. At least that's what I paid last time. So try to help us out there if you can. Thank you. Any other governing body comments? Oh, I have one. Um, I almost forgot. Uh, so I've been reaching out probably since early, geez, probably early November of last year. I've been having contact with Colorado Rockies organization. And um, I just let them know that, you know, in, in rural Colorado, it's a lot harder to have uh, camps and training for our kids down here. And it would be really great if they would use um, their, their power to, to come down this way. Uh, so we've been going back and forth. Uh, the guy's name is David Beckel. And uh, we scheduled May 19th um, to be here in Ojunta. We still don't have the location ready yet. Uh, but it's going to be a camp for all the youth in the La Junta area. Um, and we're going to see, you know, there's going to be some skills challenges and stuff like that. Uh, but they will come down May 19th, so just get that out on your calendar. We'll give more information. Uh, Brock's been working with me as well, Brock, Rufus, uh, getting us to get, get this going. And hopefully it can be an annual thing. Also, uh, when I was talking to this Rockies guy, he says, I got a friend at the Broncos. So I've been reaching out to them too, so we're trying to get get them down here as well too. So just some more stuff for our, our youth to um, have down here in this area. It's not gonna cost us anything uh, before anyone starts thinking that. Uh, it's just it's just an added thing for, for our youth down here. So I thought that was cool. Yeah. But Joe, that is one of the reasons when I read, I've been reaching out to the Young America Center in Denver literally since about 2009 to bring that program down here when I was working at Rock and Ford and they just kept blowing me off. So then they called about a year ago and said, oh, we want to come to Southeast Colorado. 
So that's how it all started. Suddenly we're getting some identity out here. Thank you for that. All right. With that, um, we will adjourn. Thank you, everyone, for coming out tonight. For La Honda City Council and the people of Southeast Colorado, I'm Adrian Hart with your Southeast Colorado News.